just uh, commenting on Stuart Hamroff's latest quantum consciousness talk that he uploaded to the Science of Consciousness YouTube channel and I guess the talk was before the actual conference that they had this past spring but it was his latest um, research and the talk was very detailed and then there was follow-up questions so it went over two hours and it's truly a revolution in science in uh, evolution and consciousness and so for people who are aware of um, Professor Emeritus Stuart Hamroff he is an anesthesiologist and he has been collaborating with um, Roger Penrose the Nobel physicist and I first um, emailed Stuart Hamroff I think it was 2004 about superconducting protons at room temperature and I can't remember what that study was now I think I looked it up again but it was I was at the university when I emailed him and I don't have that I don't use that account email account anymore and that was 20 years ago so <laughs> the um so basically he made the point that it's been shown that the quantum coherence of spin actually increases with temperature and so this indicates that you can indeed have a quantum coherence of one half spin as non locality at room temperature in quantum biology. And he also said he um, commented favorably on a study done in China about um, the anesthe anesthesia anesthetic uh, xenon which is a, an element or an atom and what they did was they it's a they used a an isotope of xenon that has one half spin difference it's a different spin so and it um, no longer worked as the anesthesia so the it proves that the microtubules that they've proven already that the anesthesia is working through the microtubules and now they've proven that it's working through the one half spin in the microtubules and this is based, they're relying on Roger Penrose um, connection to um, gravity um, as for consciousness as the collapse of the quantum coherence um, I think the equation they use is time equals uh, Planck's constant divided by the gravitational energy um, and I'm not sure if that's potential gravitational potential energy I can't remember but Roger Penrose he connects that to the um, the uh, frequency of the 
in other words, the gravitational potential, according to Roger Penrose, which is actually the actual dark energy of the universe, originates from um, quantum negative frequency and uh, as non-commutativity. And that's in his palatial twister model. And um, so what else? Oh, well, of course, Stuart Hamroff, he reviewed his model talking about benzene um, having this the six rings with the extra electrons with the one half spin of the extra electrons as the pi resonance um, being a hydrocarbon um, and that's the same as graphene and so he's making the direct connection to the same secret of graphene but he's saying this is the secret of for you know organizing biological life and then that the the neurotransmitters um, that like um, serotonin and dopamine and tryptophan and um, tyrosine they all have this benzene um, structure to them with some added, <laughs> there's some added um, indoles, I think he said they were for um, the psychedelics. And so his argument is that that's actually increasing the frequency of the microtubule energy to maintain quantum coherence for a longer time. So you maintain this resonance with the source of the universe and as the proto-consciousness of the universe. And then he's saying that the when there's the collapse of the coherence um, as consciousness, which is a being self-aware um, and also having gravity, like observing or experiencing space-time, um, that it also feels good because it's connected to these, these neurotransmitter molecules that actually have feeling to them, and it's not connected to um, any kind of logical algorithm. In other words, as Roger Penrose points out, um, consciousness is not a calculation based on uh, Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorem. And so um, Stuart Hameroff calls this the quantum uh, pleasure principle and is a hat tip to Freud's pleasure principle and he's saying that this quantum pleasure principle then is what secretly drives evolution as a feeling but it's also based on this quantum music as a quantum orchestra uh, through what Aniriban Baniopahe discovered as a resonance of phase between the different frequencies. So you have um, octaves, what he calls octaves of, of hertz at the different um, scale of the, of the neuron and then the microtubule and then the tubulin and the greatest uh, conductance um, peak, the intensity or amplitude for the um, microtubule is in the ultrasound, the megahertz, and so that is the like 
um, gateway and then to the quantum coherence with the tubulin and then Aniriban Banyopahe published how the tubulin then has super radiance and um, in this talk Stuart Hamroff hinted at the super radiance but I think his talk was before Aniriban Banyopahe actually had his super radiance paper published because that was that was very recently it was sometime this this past year and so um of course my the point of um basil j hiley when he talked to roger penrose and stuart hamroff at the mind and matter symposium in uh, finland in uh, 2022 or maybe it's 2021 but it was his point was that when you realize the one half spin as um, is non commutative time and frequency as the source of the charge, then um, because it's non commutative, there's no need for any collapse of the wave function and you actually can have anti-gravity as negative entropy so you can maintain that non-local gravitational potential as a negentropy, quantum negentropy into the macro scale and um, Stuart Hamroff he seems to be more amenable amenable to this idea because he he proffered the idea that um, like bird migration might be due to the cilia in the eyes and that pretty much every cell of life has cilia and that the cilia are microtubules and therefore it's this cilia in every cell that actually is making a non-local one-half spin resonance um, that then can um, resonate to the as a self-aware consciousness in the brain in the pyramidal neurons and so I, I made the comment that this connects to what um, Dr. Ma Wan Ho was stating that the you know that the the whole body has a quantum coherence as non-locality or potentially and it can potentially be self-aware in uh, meditation in certain certain techniques of meditation and and so the when you think of in terms of um, the relativistic uh, origin of quantum physics from Louis de Broglie then as uh, Gerard de Hooft points out with Martin Vandermark actually all matter is made of light and <clears throat> there was a um, a recent um, there's a talk uh, from the Fermi Fermi Institute on um, hold on a second here. I'm just getting some water. <clears throat> so the um, Fermi Institute had a YouTube. Um, I was watching their video on uh, the weak force and why is it weak? And he said that actually the photon has mass when you consider it in terms of 
time frequency uncertainty. Um, so he's making the same point that Roger Penrose is making, that when you take time to a um, such a small extent, then the frequency actually is a relativistic mass for the photon. And so the photon actually has a relativistic mass. And then, and since it's relativistic, then it's actually due to the non-commutative um, space-time from originating from this non-local uh, time frequency. And so based in the um, Bohmian non-commutative physics, there is no photon particle. There's simply this non-local, uh, non-commutative time frequency as a novel force that's anti-gravity. And it's also proto-consciousness. It's what they call active information as non-locality. So the active information then, or the proto-consciousness then, um, is what creates the light. It's what creates the, the photon that then becomes matter through this, um, basically like the, the non-commutative, um, like a, basically like a higher, another dimension of reality because it's this imaginary time that's inherently, it's what they call an inner autom automorphism in the mathematics. So it's inherently internal. It cannot be seen as a external measurement. And so that's why um, Professor Basil J. Hiley is working with Robert Flack to uh, do the weak measurements on um, argon and helium to prove that actual matter also has this inherent, um, what they're calling it, a nega particle in the in Yakir Aronoff's research group. So the the nega particle is not just anti matter, but it's anti mass as a gravitationally repulsive uh, force that is a novel force um, and it, it would prove then that the quantum potential is inherent to all of matter all the time and not just um, not just the photon or the electron but the actual um, mass of the of a you know element of, a, of an atom and so I wish them <laughs> I wish them the best of luck but my my focus is on the gravitational entropy being the opposite of the entropy of matter and that's due to non-commutativity and how all of science thus far has been based on commutative geometry so even though my my um my revolution is a bit more radical than even Stuart Hamroff's <laughs> revolution <laughs> um but he he actually has canoed in the boundary waters and you know I hope he's still going that's awesome I I wish I did you know I had the I I mean I have done that before but um He's, in other words, he's he's not afraid to commune with nature and everything. And he has responded to me before, but I don't. He's he didn't he stopped responding. I mean, he's obviously super busy. You know, he's organizing conferences and he's collaborating with all sorts of scientists, and and he's also still working as a 
anesthesiologist and you know so he's <laughs> I don't want to bother him obviously um, and of course Roger Penrose is I think he's like 94 or something so I don't know he he gave his last two talks have been on precognition being real which is awesome that's so cool because I know it's real <laughs> so it's really it's it's such a, an honor to have that validated to have precognition validated and um and he even uses the example of music music um, being based on like a high um, skill in music uh, requiring precognition and essentially the argument of uh, Hamroff and Penrose is that free will is this resonance with our inherent precognitive um, proto-consciousness of the universe so this is what the the Hindus um, argued also that Atman equals Brahman in other words the free will of your soul actually is the free will of the universe as well and the other thing is is that um, since evolution is based on feeling good then the the more the higher frequency of consciousness you have then the the greater the feeling of good that you have you know in the body and but that that process is inherently a resonance as a as a music as a harmony so um that that process happens through the the consciousness itself, the light being non-commutative time and frequency. And so it doesn't require a body for it to maintain consciousness. And this is something that um, Stuart Hamroff has commented on as being a speculation that, you know, that the consciousness would survive outside of the body, but then it would basically like dissipate over time and um, the what's another thing to think about here the the it's not necessarily a higher frequency because you're you're changing the definition of frequency so it's actually a when you say a negative frequency, what you really mean is a quantum undertone from the future. So it's a, it's, um, it can be a subharmonic as an undertone. Um, and this is why the, in terms of the frequency, it would also include the energy would be stored in the lower body. And this is a whole nother level um, of, um, <laughs> of consciousness that um, Stuart Hamroff hasn't even contemplated because it's like a much deeper level of non-commutativity based on the time frequency connection that um, Roger Penrose gets into and and Stuart Hamroff, he knows it's there because Anir Ban, Banyo Pai has pointed it out that it's based on this music resonance. But the problem is, is that Anir Ban, Banyo Pai rejects Roger Penrose's argument about um, Gödel's incompleteness theorem. And so Anir Ban, Banyo Pai, he's trying to do this whole nano compute nano engineering um, artificial brain project with um, gels and stuff like that and but then in our 
in my correspondence with the Nirban Banyapaya, he admitted that the the original um, block sphere, the phase, is has to be unknown. It, ha it has to be unknown, which indicates that even for him, the the AI originates from some kind of you know deeper free will of the universe, whether you want to call it, you know, Brahman or whatever, you know, word, word, whatever religious word people use or, um, anyway, so I've, I just wanted to comment on Stuart's talk because it's just like, uh, it's, it's like every time he gives a talk, it just keeps getting better. Um, the other thing, oh, the other thing I wanted to point out is he's talking about terahertz for the microtubules and the tubulin. And so the terahertz is the blue light. And in um, meditation and yoga, when you see blue light, with your eyes closed, when you start seeing bright blue light, that means your soul has been activated, that you're connecting with your soul. So that is another, um, and of course, um, serotonin is increased by, by blue light. But um, the, of course, the problem is, is that when you have the, um, like if you have too much blue light, obviously you can get, um, you can get like serotonin syndrome, you know, if you have too much serotonin and if you, when you, when people are, are always exposed to the blue light from LED light from computers and cell phones, then they don't, their brain doesn't switch from serotonin to um, mel melatonin. And so then they start messing up their sleep cycle. So that's why I wear um, red glasses at night I, when I'm using the computer. And ideally, I'd be wearing red glasses right now because I'm looking at the cell phone, you know. But um, but another way to think of this is that when you when you go into sleep, you your brain is reorganizing your memories based on your microtubules, and this is the the argument that. Um, the memories are actually stored in your soul through the super radiance of the tubulin with the microtubules. And this was first pointed out by the biologist um, J.W.S. Pringle. And he said that um, evolution is just an, an asymmetric sine wave. And I can't, I looked up that paper once, but it was a study on like the electrical signals of of uh, like squid or something, <laughs> I can't remember, but um, this is, I don't know, from maybe like the 70s. But um, the point being that um, when you have too much blue light, it's like being anesthetized. It's like mass mind control. And you, so this explains why the internet has brainwash people into whatever whatever kind of strange you know latest brainwashed <laughs> reality people contrive on the internet and their cell phones is because the blue light is is overstimulating the um, microtubule through the same quantum non-locality one half spin that the just as the birds birds using blue light for migration 
only it's the opposite effect. It's electromagnetic uh, pollution. <clears throat> and this is uh, Jack Cruz. This is his big point. That's why he advocates using the, the red uh, glasses at night. <laughs> I wear the red glasses at night. Um, <clears throat> so, so obviously it's not just blue light because the terror hurts because, um, like, like if you think of like, um, Krishna has blue skin and Hathor, Hathor, the holy, um, goddess, uh, cow of, e of ancient Egypt, she had blue skin. And so there's this association of blue with the soul as spirituality. But there's a deeper um, alchemy color, and that's the golden light. And this is what um, Chun Yi Lin talks about, that his secret of recharging his energy is to see the golden light in his lower Dantian in the elixir field. And if you study the, the color of gold in quantum chemistry, because it's a heavy, heavy element, it has the relativistic uh, quantum um, frequency. The transition frequencies is directly based on the law of phase harmony from Louis de Broglie. So you get this overlap of a quantum undertone as a negative frequency and that's what creates the blue the gold color and I did a um, blog post on that and then I did a video on my blog post <laughs> I don't I don't so I'd have to link to that video so that's my commentary on Stuart Hamroff's latest talk and I really enjoyed it and I feel like I understood him better and I feel like he understands me a little better since I've, I've sent him emails and whatever and so he knows I'm out there somewhere he's replied to me a few times and um, I wish him the best of you know, his, I, I told him his talk is like a Nobel Prize level of talk because he's, he's got his own model of evolution. He's explaining consciousness. Um, he's explaining this new healing secrets using ultrasound. Of course, when you do um, standing exercises, you're your collagen is piezoelectric and it's vertically aligned. So when you stand with your knees bent, and if you know the secrets of um, non-commutativity, then you can vastly increase the electrical conductance of the of the collagen through the polarity of the body. You know, using the right hand, left hand, and upper body and lower body and the left and right eye, you know, if you know it's a polarity of non-commutative signals, then you can resonate with the microtubule. Um, you can increase your consciousness or, you know, the you can access the future, essentially, <laughs> and then heal the body as a preventative medicine, even, and anyway, so um, I'm going to finally stop rambling and um, I'm just uh, very thankful. Oh, and I forgot to mention that um, Bernie from Burn Eye of Crypto Alchemy said that he's going to... Um, have a show with me on Tuesday, Tuesday night. So I sent him all these videos for um, internal alchemy. We're going to discuss internal alchemy. And I sent him all these Qigong videos. 
um, demonstrating the energy from the energy results, the effects of the meditation, and how that ties into physiology. And, and then we can discuss the videos because people want to see, they want to see, you know, seeing is believing. That's the mainstream view of reality. But of course, alchemy is the exact opposite of that. It's based on listening. And so, but we got to start with something that people can relate to. So they want to see something. So I have sent them like, I don't know, a dozen videos and to discuss. And then I'm going to try to be riding my free energy bicycle that I, that I built in the garage, the little... Um, generator using a DC motor and a DC buck a DC DC buck converter and plugged it into the computer and then that'll power the it'll be a free energy um, connection <laughs> it's not the same as as alchemy because it's not the polarity so that's something we can talk about um, as far as the anyway we'll see how that goes and so that could be very exciting. I won't have to whisper because I'll be in the garage. So I'll have to scream because that, that um, free energy machine's really loud. And hopefully it'll work because I haven't used it all winter. So, all right, it's very exciting for me because that might get, that could get, you know, 500 views or something. Maybe, maybe even 5,000, I don't know. And um, if he's interested in alchemy, and I'm interested in alchemy, then hopefully he'll want to talk about the, <laughs> the alchemy. And I'll scrub my teeth better. i got to use my own. Um, I've been drinking tea all the time and coffee. So ideally I would go off caffeine too, but I don't know if that's going to happen, so. Um, Robert Peng says that when he drinks coffee, it completely destroys his chi. <laughs> and so that's a, that's just proves that you got to really purify yourself to really do the real the real deal with the wand with the wand chi the cosmic chi. Okay, thank you.